Live from the all-new Naaman Creative Studios, I'm your host, Eric Nutting of the Sun Leaders Podcast. I say that because we are actually in a brand new studio, and it's awesome. I am in the room with Jordan. He's our producer. He is rocking out. We've spent some time today. And then across the table from me, I'm just now getting to know the lovely Miss Diane Nutting, who I have been married to for 35 years. We're going to have a conversation today, um, and I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be a smidge different. So I am the owner of the Growth Coach. Strike that. Reverse that. I am the co-owner of the Growth Coach of St. Petersburg, Florida. Florida? Florida. My co-owner is sitting across the table from me. And I asked Diane to come on the show because I thought it was about time that uh, the audience hears from her and we check in. We're six episodes into this, and a big portion of our business at the Growth Coach of St. Petersburg is working with entrepreneurs and couples in business. And as you'll find out, perhaps through the next 45 minutes, we have tested ourselves a little bit through this process of 35 years with you know, who's got a crazy idea and how are we going to follow that through and will we even follow it through. So I always give people a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, aside from being my wife and co-owner of multiple businesses and the parents of five, Diane is also an author of young adult books, and I really want her to have the chance to uh, to tell you about those. So, Diane, thank you for being here. Welcome to the Sun Leaders Podcast. Hello. Uh, no pressure, huh? No pressure. No pressure. Just a conversation. Well, I, I guess I just I said I, I just said hello. I only gave you a chance to say hello. <laughs> Would you like to That's introduce normal. yourself to the uh, audience and tell them a little bit about yourself? Tell them a little about your books. Uh, hi, I'm Diane. Um, about myself, uh, I am the co-owner of uh, the Growth Coach. I'm really um, I consider myself to be more administrative. Uh, at best, Eric really is the eyes, ears, body, soul of uh, this business. But he is also an amazing partner uh, when it comes to being, uh, I guess, what you call really supportive. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I write. Um, I have two books in publication, um, and I do have a couple stories that I've got going on. And five kids and a cat, a dog. So I'm just going to jump in right there. Mm -hmm. Two books, Hurricane, Eye of the Storm. And coming up is Aftermath. Aftermath. So this trilogy. And I had a conversation, a couple of conversations before you and I had the chance to sit down today. I was a guest on a couple of other podcasts today. And so there's kind of a through line for me and there's not for you. <laughs> but the nature of your books is... Um, it is young adults, and it is kind of, uh, what do you call it, fantasy? I uh, do indeed call it fantasy. Yes, fan fantasy, so the the part of the world that is not appealing to you. Um, <laughs> uh, I really, really, really enjoy reading fantasy. And when it comes down to it, when I, when I really decided to sit down and write stuff, I wanted to write something I wanted to read. So... I secretly, quietly wrote this book because I was supposed to be doing other work. It was our last venture of doing voiceovers, and it was really boring. And um, I had to do uh, a lot of editing and uh, to get away from the editing and, and eating to stay awake. Sound editing, right? Sound editing, yes. Um, I thought it would be really fun after a while, but I'm just not – I don't have the ears for it. Um, and so uh, – I would quietly go write chapters after chapters after chapters. More than just quietly, covertly. Covertly was covertly. Right? Yes, it was in the bathroom. It was while I was picking up the kids. It was, hey, um, I've, I I want to go lay my head down for a couple of minutes and I'd be writing. And I don't know why that was so necessary. I, I felt kind of guilty about not working in our business. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, I recognized that that was like a, a thrill for me. And I was kind of embarrassed, and um, I didn't feel that my work, <clears throat> because I wasn't an, a teacher, I wasn't educated, I felt that my work probably was not going to go, uh, that's like a blowhard, just thinking that I could write. Uh, and so 
I did it quietly. I did it in secret. And when I finally finished, I presented it to the husband and said, look what I did. And he said, when did you do this? So that was a really fun dialogue. That was a really, really fun thing to figure out. Me being the husband. Yes. Just clarification. So, yes. So then I had to kind of say, yeah, that's why the, the project didn't get finished. So that was my writing journey. So, but what's really interesting, it didn't really start there. And no. what's really fun is we really have just discovered this over the last week with Brett being back in the house. Yeah. They came by some old writing of yours. Really, and, really, really old. And a huge part of our parenting was you creating stories for the kids. For the kids. And they would always say, before going to bed, tell us a story with your mouth. Yes, tell us a story with your mouth. Uh, and it was always a story. Well, it started out with me telling uh, Alec he had to get off the washer because there was a troll underneath. No, I think that was you. I told him there was a troll. You told you him telling him nice troll. things. I said, get off the yeah. washer. There's a troll back there. There's a troll underneath the, with the washer. Get down. And I was just, I mean, he just jumped right off that thing like... Like, oh, my God, I've never seen a kid jump off there. He was shaking. and um... One of my proudest moments of parenting. <laughs> oh, you've got more. Oh, um, do I. <laughs> so uh, I sat down and I told him a story uh, that was a really nice story. It was, it was Alec uh, and the Disappearing Forest. And uh, it kind of went through the trials and tribulations of him being a friend with a troll. And we had at the time the story was actually it wasn't Alec in the Disappearing Forest. It was uh, a a story about him and his friend that lived underneath our house. Right. That was the beginning story. Right. Right. And so we talked about how he would climb underneath this trap door in his room and he'd go see his friend the troll. And um, I eventually made it a much bigger, bigger story. And every single night, Gosh, I think it must have gone on an hour every single night telling a story, a new story about Alec and the Disappearing Forest. So now I didn't know that our youngest uh, was reading one of our stories, my stories. Just got back from uh, college, college in New Hampshire. He's hanging out in our house again. And he was going through a bookcase and found Yeah, the Golden a Key. It was, a, it, was a, it was called the Golden Key. I wasn't sure what to call it. And it was just about the very first book I ever wrote. And I printed it, and I was so proud of it. And I, um, it was it's actually pretty bad, but um, well, they're loving it. They he, are. He's on the phone with his girlfriend, girlfriend Amaya, Brett and Amaya, and they read this. They're reading it together. Yeah, it's pretty cute. And now, uh, they shared that with the other kids, and Rachel's championing you. Yes, right? Rachel said, "Hey, it's about time you get Alec out of there as the main person and right. put all of us kids in." Which kind of uh, makes me laugh a little bit, but he, she did. She did give me a great idea, and, Ra and, and Rachel's an amazing writer in an, in her own right. Uh, she's actually editing my third book, and so she called up and she said, "Hey, I really, really, I, I heard what Brett's doing, and I really think that you should put all of us kids in it." And so I kind of thought about it, and I sat down, and it's just, it's been seamless. So I'm really hoping that this is kind of an, another path for me. On the ever-so-rare chance that our five children listen to this podcast, let's go <laughs> ahead and just recognize them all. We have Alec. Alec. He's our oldest, and I think it's fair to say now that we're going to be grandparents. Grandparents, right? yes. Uh, and he won't tell us the sex of the baby, and I'm really upset with him. But married, that's right. married to the beautiful uh, Mariana. Mariana. So they're our oldest. And then we have Scott, and then we have... <laughs> I have to stop and think about this. Well, I do. Rachel. Yeah, we've got a lot of them. And then there's uh, Brett, and, Brett Rebecca. and Rebecca. So those are the five kids. Yeah. Um, they're all remarkably unique, and there's that awesome family bond that just pulls us all together, and you know that we're all family. Um, so with all of this, stories are a huge part of your life, and you are apt to fantasy. Absolutely. You, in your life, tell yourself stories as a coping mechanism. Yeah, it's it's actually something I'm trying to stop doing. Uh, not telling fantasy stories, not writing, not creating. No. But you're trying to, in, in a day-to-day -day life, stop telling yourself stories. Yes. Um, I grew up anxious. I grew up a really, really shy, introverted, um, very... Uh, troubled kid. Uh, Though you were captain of the drill team? Yes, because that was a singular group that I was very comfortable in. Right, Once understood. I was in a group and I was comfortable in it, 
I could kind of shine. But if you made me go outside of that, right. it, it wasn't something I could do. Right. But I was co-captain and then I was captain. Okay. Um, uh, and it was, uh, I loved it. I loved it. And those girls still talk. But I think when you talk, talk about it. anxiety, I, uh, we've become an, ang- an anxious world, haven't Very we? Very anxious world. And I think this generation is an anxious generation. When I say Very. this generation, the kids we, we raised. And I think anxiety is uh, rooted in fear, right? It is, absolutely. Fear of how we're perceived, mm-hmm. fear of do we fit in. And that's when you start telling yourself stories. Right. So I would tell stories that somebody didn't like me, and maybe they just didn't even know me. Mm-hmm. I would tell stories um, about why somebody wasn't coming home on time, like mm-hmm. maybe Scott was being arrested. I actually called the police right. office one time to see if my second oldest was there, and he was only with a friend. His but his phone had died. All so, right. I mean, little things like that. And I think people do that more often than they think. So this is really interesting to me. We're turning something that has been kind of a challenge into something that can really be a plus for you. Yes. Which I think is what we want to do in life with, with everybody. It's what we do as coaches, mm-hmm. as, as a life coach and a business coach, which, which I am both of. And you are a certified uh, business coach. So we're always trying to find how to turn these dysfunctions into something functional where Absolutely. they can thrive. So you created stories, and then you ended up writing a structured story in secret. And now we need to turn that into something. Well, you did. You turned it into something powerful. But this is the point I want to get to. When you have an idea of what you want to do, and I have an idea of what I want to do, and I want to look through the lens of working with any couple, how do we get those paths to be parallel paths? How do we do that and avoid the conflict that comes up sometimes? That's how we can get couples in business to thrive. I agree with that. Uh, It's not always easy because... Not if you have to go write it in secret or do whatever in secret. Absolutely, but that was... Secret secret, secrets are no fun. (laughs) Secret secrets hurt someone. <laughs> um, I I think what it comes down to is communication. Uh, if you have really good communication and you can actually be your true self mm-hmm. and and have a dialogue that's not going to explode. Um, I think that I think some of what happened uh, in our life was the fact that um, I was staying home. I really wanted to go back to work. It was not good for the family to have me go back to work, and it was my coping mechanism. You wanted to go back yes. to work? Okay, gotcha. Yes. And and and, and I, I, would... I look back on it, and it was such a blessing to stay home. It was like, I mean, who gets that? Who gets to stay home with their kids? And I think maybe that's when I wasn't listening. I don't know who was right oh, we or were... who was wrong, but here's the deal, right? Yes. I want to go back to work, and I said... How are we going to do that? We yes. can't afford child yes. care or anything else. These kids need somebody at home, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and ha, if I had it to do all over again, I'd do the same exact thing, but I'd be yes. nicer about it. I Yeah, I think I think sometimes we just have coping mechanisms in how to, how to make enough money for a, a family that large. Right. And some of the coping mechanisms are just trying to get through everything as calmly and as uh, as together as a family, you can as as a family. You know, I just think it, that when now that I look back on it, I look back on my life. I I know that this was a it was a beautiful thing to be able to stay home, and then it was a beautiful thing to go to work because my my I had a few of the kids who stopped and said, "This is amazing. Is that what we think you're amazing for doing this?" Mm-hmm. So I think the timing of it was really important because it was a good time for me to do that. And kind of uh, we had one of our daughters uh, did not speak to you or really interact with you very much. But because I went back to work, she was forced to. Yeah, I ended up defining myself as mom 2.0. Yes, yes. And uh, learned to cook up some goulash and yeah. stuff. And uh, I, I did a lot of She like, still giggles with you. It's right. uh, it, She's still- And she challenges le- me to cook for yeah, her Yeah, she does. She's absolutely hilarious. And I think sometimes when we're pushed to our limits, I think that's when we thrive. Here, I, I agree with you. But here's something that's really interesting to me. I say, how do we get these paths to be parallel? Mm, that was the question. You say <laughs> communication, but here's the deal, right? I can communicate your truth. 
you can communicate your truth, but the, if there's a conflict, how do we work that out? You just said your truth and your truth. Uh, well, there's you the rub, right? It should all be m- you said what, my it should all be what truths, I want, not right? what you want. <laughs> that's, that's that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> That's how we make things work out. You listen to you me, listen and to I just I listen to you, and I lay down the law, and then I do everything in secret. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So we're just looping around a problem. So, <laughs> how do we get paths to be parallel? Oof. If I communicate my truth to you and you don't like my truth, then what? That's a really, really good question. Uh, I think there's a lot more talking that has to happen because you have to really understand where the person's coming from. Mm-hmm. You have to understand: Is it just a vanity thing? Is it, is it, is it fantasy? Is it real? Is it something you just want to try? Uh, there's a lot of different factors that go into it, and I think, um, I think that if you can understand where somebody's coming from and how important it is to them, then I think there can always be some some sort of. Um, it's tricky though because. Yeah. Your decisions affect my life. My decisions affect your life. Yes, absolutely. So I always wonder, and this is something you and I did, we we tried to really define what purpose was to us as individuals and how those could be working together collectively. And you and I came to the conclusion, uh, I don't know, five, ten, however many years ago, that, listen, we have this big family and our purpose is to take care of them. yes. And I know that seems obvious to the listener. That seems obvious to people living and going through it. But I think it's not quite as easy as all that, is it? No. So Because because somebody has to give up something. Somebody has to get but I think not just somebody, I think always. Somebody always. has you always have to give something to get something. Yeah. It's just thought process, metaphysical concept, energy replaces energy. If I want something You have to give up something. You know, I like it when people go, oh, well, you, you've got 24 hours in a day, but I'm filling <laughs> most of it. So if I'm going to place what you think is a priority, what your priority is, I have to move something in my day that I think is a priority. Well, let me give you an example. Uh, case in point, you, we, we had our big family, right? This we might submit. be edited out. I don't know. <laughs> we uh, had... A boy who decided he was going to play football. We did. And a couple of them. Yeah. But the first one. Gotcha. Uh, And he was uh, a very active kid, uh, tried a lot of different things, but you weren't around for some of it. Hi. And you wanted to. So Eric Nutting Mm -hmm. stopped acting. I did. That is, you gave something up. I don't look at it as giving. I don't look at that as giving up. I look at that as a good, healthy choice. Yes. But that's what I mean. We have choices, don't we? Yes, 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 yes. So that oh, was, that's interesting. That, yes. So if we look at it this way, if we say, "Look, I'm not necessarily giving something up. I'm gaining something in this yes, process." Yes, absolutely. Hey, that's actually. I a nice gained way to look a at better it. connection with my family rather than just worrying about whatever you said. I gave up. You <laughs> acting. Yeah, uh, acting. Acting. Right. Mormon photographics, where every click captures the essence of life's most precious moments. Our studio stands as a beacon of creativity and professionalism, offering a myriad of services tailored to your every photographic need. Whether you seek a studio portrait or the allure of on-location sessions in the Tampa and St. Petersburg waterfronts or lush parks, we bring your vision to life with creativity and professionalism. Corporate headshots, we excel at those too. Providing impeccable quality whether in the studio or at your corporate headquarters. Need portraits for a large team or event? We orchestrate seamless setups for groups or individuals. But our expertise doesn't stop there. From high-end school portraits to photo restoration, from pet portraits to product images, our portfolio spans the spectrum of photographic artistry. Led by professionals with degrees in both photography and fine art, our team is dedicated to exceeding your expectations with every frame. Step into our studio, where creativity knows no bounds. Contact us to book your session today at mormonphoto.com. So, big, big boo-hoo, woo-woo, I didn't become an actor, or I gave, I, I stopped acting. I mean, I get a kick-ass family. That's, yeah. that's good. Now, some people out there, and some people maybe have lived 
an even more complex life than this. They go, well, I can have it all. And I found a way to have it all. <laughs> and I think that's a thousand percent awesome. Whatever, whatever your journey is, whatever road you went on to get where you're at, I think that's perfect. I don't think it's the same for everybody. That was just that was just how it worked for us. Exactly. It's 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 hard to it it's hard for two people to be incredibly focused on a on a business or a job mm-hmm. if you've got if you're pretty much overwhelmed with right. the with the amount of bodies you have in the household. So what's interesting about this uh, entrepreneurial journey, oftentimes when we look at couplepreneurs, which Mm -hmm. is how they define it now, two people are in the same business, but oftentimes uh, there's somebody else who's really holding down the fort, yes, doing a nine to five or whatever the case may be. Right now, you're holding down the nine to five Mm -hmm. with a pretty serious job. So what's the the deal uh, from your side of things in a couplepreneur? When your partner, me, keeps asking for more and more and more. Um, to be honest, it's always been my pleasure. Not always, but uh, since I went back to work, since uh, you've set out on this journey, uh, we've set out on this journey, I said I wanted to be a, a really big part of it, and we found out that just was not, not mathematically so much possible. Math- yeah, it was not mathematically possible. Uh, I like working for somebody who will give me a paycheck. Right. That's just, we, we finally came to that conclusion. And I wasn't uh, paying very well. <laughs> no, but but here here's the deal. When you ask for stuff, and I know I can do it, it is my pleasure to right. do it. I always, I, I'm going to say something. Um, so, of course this I'm saying this might something. be edited out. <laughs> You keep saying that. Um, <laughs> it's gone well so far. <laughs> so I was able to stay home for 20 plus years to raise kids, uh, to be the mom, to turn take out them. pretty freaking awesome. Oh, I think they're amazing kids. Right. Um, I've been able to, I was able to go to all the events. I was able to do all of those things. I don't know a lot of people nowadays who have that, uh, that, that, <clears throat> like luck of being able to do that because this world is so expensive. So, I mean, gosh, we're even looking at our kids who were like trying to find some place to stay and it's not, it's uh, it's way too expensive. You got to have roommate, 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 roommate. So, yeah, so the, it, the question so is. So when the question is, I'm coming back to it. Okay. <laughs> um, the question was, how do I deal with that? It is my pleasure. He, I'm, I'm just going to tell you the listener right now. Eric worked two, three jobs at a time for us to have the, the lifestyle that we had. We had a very modest lifestyle with five children. And when I went back to work, the youngest were going into fifth grade. So, and the oldest was, not, were not, was nine years older than the last two. So that was a long time. So that he was, was in first 20, year in college already, right? He was in the first year. He was just finishing up his first year gotcha. or just started. Right. Um, so it is my pleasure, absolute 100% pleasure to do anything I can because he sacrificed a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. And I don't look at it as a sacrifice at all. But I do. Um, so that I could have the benefit of being there to stay home and uh, and take care of them. We were kind of overwhelmed with them, but <clears throat> it was a fun overwhelming. It was the best life I could have ever imagined. So through that story, our story, are things changing generationally? Do we still have big, of course we do, but well, things our, are changing a bit, aren't two they? Two of our kids want four kids. Two of them, the, fo- the, the football players, each said, Alec and, and Brett, they each said they wanted four kids. And, and well, I think the girls said that too. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. So which does that mean we did something right? I don't know. It means they enjoyed their big family. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Or maybe they just want more labor because they didn't like chores. I don't know. <laughs> but it makes it it, it 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 brings me joy to think that they enjoyed yeah. that part of their journey. But my my thought process is it's not a one economy. No, it's not. It's not a one life a anymore. One, a one career. 
life anymore. It's not even a, that's a great point. It's not even a one career. And no. I think we're, we keep having this ebb and flow, push and pull sort of process. I think right now we're in a process of we're pushing more people out into this entrepreneurial journey. And I think so many times there's no guidance in that process. For instance, Scott has a job now where he is uh, finishing furniture yes. for another entrepreneurial couple. And I listen to what his bosses do. And I think they're just great poster children for where we're at now, right? We're always Absolutely. doing a gig. Mm -hmm. uh, always somebody's delivering, not you and I, but just Someone's society. Somebody's doing deliveries and yeah. delivering pizza. Uh, DoorDash. Rub or, oven or yeah, doing a hook. craft or yeah. whatever. It's really interesting to see where this is headed now. But I will tell you this. If I had had half of those things at my availability, right. I wouldn't be in the post office. But then the question is, did we? Maybe there were those we opportunities. Not, it was not around. I mean, certainly furniture is not a new idea. Okay. I babysat for a while. Right. You know, uh, someone, someone else's kids. Um, like somebody's picking up this toy, right? And they paint something on it to make it look magical and they resell it. Yeah. Reselling is a big part of uh, the economy right now. It That's is. interesting. It is. Yeah. So I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. All I know is if I had had. Say Instacart, right. you know, I even as a, a stay-at-home mom. You pack up the kids in the van, Gosh, yeah. go do some shopping. I'd say, kids, okay, break. You're going to go get this, this, this. Yeah, could I would have done something. could have delivered pizzas back then, I guess. Uh -uh. That sounds horrible. That though, sounds terrible. Not, not, I'm sorry, pizza not... drivers. I'm not saying your life is horrible. <laughs> I'm just saying to think that you're packing up three kids in the back of the Plymouth Minivan. Voyager or whatever it was and trying to make sure they were safe while getting pizza to a door, that's... That's quite it's, a life. It's definitely it's definitely a grind sometimes. It's you got to be ready for all of life's challenges. So here we are, we're in our 50s, a kid, the youngest kids are 20 and we own a business. Yes. Where do you see life over the next 20 years? Oof. Individually and as a business owner. Gosh, that's kind of a loaded question. Uh life. I hope it's on the other side of the bridge. I hope that it's going to be Oh. Listeners, we live in Lakeland, Florida. You might not know the area, but uh, we own our business in St. Pete. Diane works in Tampa. It's a long commute. Go on. So, so I hope it's on the other side of the bridge. I do hope that we're over here. Uh, I want to live over here and as soon as possible, really. Um, it's hard because you've got the kids. Kids in were selling the house. <laughs> um, so, where do I see life? I really hope that I'm still writing. Hope. You hope you're still writing. I what would I'm keep you from writing? writing? Life. You know, uh, my mother's older. Mm. Um, our kids are, you know, our first grandchild's on the way. Mm -hmm. um, I just want, it, if things progress on the path they're on, then family-wise. Here's I, the thing that's interesting, right? I'm a coachy coach. Anybody <laughs> else who would sit across from me, I would challenge on that. So I guess I'm kind of challenging you. It's what like, is it? I hope I'll be writing. I, I would need us to reframe that. If that is tied to part of your purpose and your pleasure and your joy, I would say you need to find a way to write. Okay. Well, then Eric Nutting let me write. <laughs> <laughs> but why the voice? I'm Were you trying kidding. to seduce me in front of everybody <laughs> so I would let you write? Is that what happened? Okay, no. I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's... Uh, I. So I I I I hope that I hope. Listen to me. I'm starting with the hope again. I do. Hope I have is lots powerful. Of hope hope yes, is necessary. Is. Hope is necessary. When you lose that hope, I have been in places in my life where I had no hope. So, but as we think about affirmations, I will, I am. You know, that's will, I am. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I I I am planning a life of being a writer. I'm planning a life of having uh, some sort of a publishing entity mm -hmm. uh, in my future. Uh, I am, you know, I, I just hope to be the best partner possible in that, you know, we need to bring, uh, more help in. I don't beat up against that. Um, that if we can learn and grow and thrive mm -hmm. together in, in, um, any, any fashion, uh, that's important and right. it's to not be closed off. So that's, that's my... That's really... So this is really, really interesting. So I say, where will you be? What do you want to do? How do you see life playing out in the next 20 years? And I would encourage all of that. 
the writing's hugely important. We've it is. got a few different enterprises, Nutting Creative LLCs, yes. our holding company for these different enterprises. But so th- that's what's really important to you as we think about creativity. And what's important to me is working on the Sage approach, yes. moving my coaching practice forward, all that stuff. So now the question is where can they, where can for they any couple, but merge. for us specifically, not even, well, m- at least have that parallel journey. Yes. Because I know I'm not enough to do what I'm doing. Well, that's part of the, you know, that's part, I guess, I guess I don't really, I don't uh, expand on some of my things I say. Mm. I, I've got it up in the head, mm-hmm. but to me, being as supportive and everything, that's, hey, I'll do this, this, and this, and, and I'll be a part, you know, I'll, I'll be a part of Sage Approach. I'll be a part of Growth Coach. I'll be, I'll be in it, but I think I'm still trying to find my place in it right. because I'm working. Um, and then I get home and I'm tired. But Why? There, Why are you tired? Because I have things to do. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And so I I would just like to be a very open-minded person mm-hmm. and create a big portion of the publishing portion. Do, I had this conversation earlier, so I'm going to ask you, do you agree that to grow you have to be uncomfortable? Do you think that's Extremely. An, you do? Uh-huh. Absolutely. So we have to deliberately be uncomfortable. Yes. Can't we just grow and be happy about it and sure we not can. be uncomfortable? But there's an uncomfortableness with doing something you've never done before. Well, it's a clumsiness. It's clumsy, for sure. Maybe it's just semantics. I, I just applied to a really, really... Uh, I applied to do a detail. Yes. And it's very scary because it's something I've never done before. Mm-hmm. And in the post office, what's great is that they will give you opportunities to go work to in another right. section gotcha. for... Three months at a time. So you can try out some things. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've never seen a job like this before in my life. And it's scary because it's some, it's some, it's some pretty, it's a pretty intense job. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is quite a couple steps up from what I do. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm very administrative. So your point is you put yourself in that position. I it will be the, uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And, and plus I'll be Thus putting gross. a little strafe in my office because I'm gone. Uh, yeah. Then... You get back and you have a little bit of backlash because you tried it, but you, but people are excited about you because you tried right. it. So, um, it's uh, it, I think in that in essence, that's scary and mm-hmm. it's it's uncomfortable and you're putting yourself out there, and you're saying that uh, I I I want to do something different and it's scary, right? And I think you've got to be really uncomfortable sometimes to try. To try stuff because that, that's not me. I mean, I'm not. I'm not somebody who just leaps. Uh, it's only been the last maybe five to ten years that I've been that way. That that I've been, that I've leaped. So we're on this podcast, part of a group called Sun Leaders. Yes. And I always like to ask couples, which we are, in a couple, who leads, who follows. Oof. I have an answer in my mind that I of think you, you should do. say. <laughs> Well, I would say some, 90, well, I'll say no, not 90, about 60% of the time, mm-hmm. y- you lead our day-to-day. Because I'm needier? Yes. Yeah, probably. About 40% of the time, uh, I'm kind of leading the rest of it, okay. you know, the family and so the- So where did this concept that uh, our parents before us and their parents' parents and so on and so with forth, us with this 50-50- the, pa- the parents never said it was 50-50. My parents told me it was 50-50. No. My mom was, she was like 20% of the Your mom the, of the told household. you, honey, you're only going to get 20% yeah, basic- of the decision-making yeah, power. Yeah, basically. She my did dad, not tell you that. She didn't tell me that, but she emulated s- it. Okay. I, I. She did. My mom was a very passive mom, and whatever my dad wanted to do, my dad got to do and, and did. And he was a very, very, very nice man, very wonderful man. I have to. Um, Let me reframe the question. Yes. To thrive, who leads, to who follows? Thrive. My dad made us thrive, but you're talking about it with us? Well, I'm talking about through the lens of leadership and through the lens of moving a company forward and a family oh. forward. Yeah, a uh, company would be you, family would be me. Really? Why? And that's 50 50, isn't it? No. Yes, it is. That's horrible math. <laughs> why wouldn't I have 50% of the say in what happens in the family? Well, and if you, you wanted to take 50% of the ownership of the business, why wouldn't you take on 50% of that? Well, I could, but I, I guarantee you um, there, are, there are good portions of it that I just don't think I would be qualified for. Hmm, interesting. You're qualified to run your own business of publishing? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Okay. In the bigger so, context. Yeah. Uh, this is getting dicey. Well, no, I think it's this is good problem solving. Um, 
my thought process is it's got to be collaborative always. I don't necessarily think there is a leader or a follower in a couple. Mm. I and do. I think that's the ch- well. That's interesting. You think there is? I don't think there is. Now, if you look in the in the in the Christian sense, you know, the man is the head of household. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I once tried to join a church, and they said, "Not without your husband." Right. Mm-hmm. They sure did. So I guess I guess I don't know what to say about well, that. Well, I, well, I think what it is is nowadays we are in a society where you need two incomes. So because of that. You need two able bodies who are a 50-50. I've only been in this particular placement for the last 10 years. The rest of the time, I was counting on you for money. I was counting on you to keep the family going. This is why I'm pushing back on it, because you say that you get to take leadership on the family, and I think, eh, I think I've actually been... At least a 50% partner on that family process. Are you upset about this? Well, I did tear up a little bit. No, really? I'm not upset. <laughs> I'm trying to solve problems because in context of what I do as the growth coach of St. Petersburg, mm-hmm. Florida, I try to help solve people's problems. And I want the listeners to be able to, first of all, think that I'm worthy of working with. And secondly, that we've actually done something reasonable to help lead them. So, you know, we have problems and then we find solutions and we create more problems. We find more solutions. So okay. in context, who leads, who follows? Do we even need a leader? Is leading even important? Do we need a son leader of a family? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe the kids lead. Maybe most of the time they do. Yes. Yes. I mean, we have to come to some sort of consensus. Yes. You and I, we've got to come to an agreement to make the family work. And here's the challenge, isn't it? If we can't come to an agreement, we part ways. And that's what so many couples and families do They do these so days. easily nowadays. So easily. And I get this conscious uncoupling and living my own passion. I mean, I understand the language of it. Yeah. I I do. And certainly you and I, after 35 years, have had our peaks and valleys. But my question is, how do we get on? How do we get on? And how (laughs) how do we get on and how do we stay on the same page? A lot of communication and not shutting somebody down. Not shutting somebody down, which I'm apt to do. Yes. I'm pretty good at that because if I think something's really important or I don't have capacity, I shut something down. Absolutely. Right. And that, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's where, that's where uh, I struggle a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, That's an old reflex. So listen, bring in a full circle. If that's the case, maybe I'm just going to go in secret, go into the closet and write my story. Yep. Rather than deal with this guy's pushback. Yes. Right. Absolutely. There are people still like that. Uh, Right now, I, right now, you're great. You're like, you know what? You say you set out time to write. I'm, an I'm old not man. D- I lost energy. Oh, are you saying it's an energy thing? It's no, no totally. longer. It's no. no longer like. A, no, I just felt it was like getting helping. serious. I wanted to make you laugh. Oh, <laughs> this is all the time. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not trying sure to are. evolve, and I'm trying to be way more mindful because okay. once well, we create a problem, it's like, well, let's not go create that same problem. Let's create a brand new problem. Well, and and. I think what I think what it is is um let's create a random problem. <laughs> I just got that. Um I think I think what I'm dealing with is you you kind of get no to an imposter syndrome, right? When it comes to doing something that you're not used to doing. Like you're all day in the business. I loved going out with you to the networking events and I love seeing everybody. I, I just I love Saint Pete. I love the people here. I love um what everybody's about. And I miss it. Mm-hmm. And I really felt a sense of community like like I've never felt before. But I've been out of it for a couple of months now. And I'm suddenly feeling a little like imposter syndrome. Like, do I even belong in the company? That's really interesting. So I, I have to I think I have to constantly have um, a communication with these groups that that we've been enmeshed in. Right. Um, where. Where I, you know, now when you ask me this question, Mm -hmm. it kind of puts on an insecurity. Um, So, you know, our whole family structure, I'm secure in. So in the business sense, I just have to own it. I have to own my part in it. And that's kind of what I'm getting up to. Gotcha. I'm, I'm trying to get in there. 
it's kind of it's hard after 40 hours in the week for but, sure for but, sure yeah and again, i guess that comes back to one of the questions like how much at the end capacity? of the day you're done yeah and i would need more 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 because i only got to half of my list of things yeah and we do but we, do we need do to hire out help yeah. and all that stuff which so is a totally different problem we don't have time to get into but when businesses don't have the ability to monetize beyond the capacity of the its current work staff, what do you do? Yeah, you, you lean uh, on the people in your family. That'll that'll be part two of this conversation. Okay. So we're just about out of time, and I want to give the listeners a chance to uh, hear again who you are, share your books with them, how they can interact with you in these stories, what's next for you, and then I'll go ahead and close it out. Okay. Um I am Diane Nutting. I am the other half of the speaker. Uh, I have two books, uh, Hurricane. <laughs> sorry, sorry, blank there for a minute. Hurricane and um, Eye of the Storm and I'm um, Having Aftermath come out. Uh, and also next year, I hope to have a, a children's series called Alec. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet, but it's something along the lines of A Disappearing Forest. Uh, and how you can interact is... Uh, Probably. I, I don't really have a way to. I, you can buy the books on Amazon. Well, as a business coach, we've got to solve that problem. I know, we My do, gracious. we do. It's been, it's been like 11 years since I, since I was really, since I really dove into all of that because I went to yeah. work. So. And here's what's interesting. They sold remarkably well without much effort. So that's exciting. And they're excellent books. Thank and you. you've got excellent reviews on them. Um, so that's exciting. We're going to turn them into audio books since that's kind of in our wheelhouse of things to do. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to see where this goes for you, for us, uh, for the children. <laughs> so um, thank you for you. You left work early for us. I did. To yes. be part of this yes, conversation. Very fun. I appreciate that. Uh, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I love you, too. Uh, my, I am Eric Nutting with my beautiful wife, Diane. We are the owners of the Growth Coach of St. Petersburg, Florida. We are a part of the Sun Leaders, and this is the Sun Leaders podcast produced by Name and Creative. If you'd like to get a hold of me because you thought, oh my gosh, that guy sounded so smart today, <laughs> you can reach me at enutting at thegrowthcoach.com.com. I will confuse you just like I confused everybody else. Take care. We will speak with you next time.